Hey, what's going on, folks? Welcome once more to Console Tronics. And today I'm going to be answering all your questions and queries, anything at all, be the gaming related or not. So this is my Q and A video. So all the questions you've left me, and I have to apologise if I look a little dishevelled. I'm literally just in the door from work. So let's crack on with it. Okay, first up is Infected Flinch, who says, "Hey, up, buddy! Congrats on 200 subs." Now, I better be very careful with how I respond to his questions, as this man is a hardened criminal. Okay, questions. One, favourite console? Oh, I trust it to start with such a hard question. Um, I'd like to say Super Famicom. PC Engine is definitely right up there. But if I had to say what my favourite console was of all time, I would have to plump for the Sega Saturn. That was the first console I actually went out and bought with my own money. Um, about six months after the UK release, I was going out buying one, two, sometimes even three games a week. It was fun times, the 32-bit era was a really exciting era for gamers. So, yeah, the PlayStation trounced it in the long run, but I was there from the beginning, and I supported it to the very end. The Sega Saturn is officially my favourite console. And two, he asks, favourite nose hair? Is that Cockney rhyming slang for something? That one. Next he asks, what's your favourite cheese? Does Philadelphia count? And fourth he asks, favourite, favourite... something. If I had to say what my favourite, favourite thing at this moment in time was, I would say YouTube. Because I got to meet so many fun and interesting people, such as yourself, Mr. Finch. So, I'd like to thank you for asking your interesting set of questions. And if you don't know who Infected Finch is, I highly recommend his channel. Very entertaining character. So, who else have we got? We have New Super Monaco GP Project. And if that's not just your username and is actually a thing, you have my 100% back in. And he says, my question is not really a question, but a request to share a little more info about the man behind Consultronics. Um, the man behind Consultronics. Well, the man directly behind Consultronics is myself. My name is Graham King. I'm from Neasden in northwest London. Um, I currently live in Hackfield in Hertfordshire. And if any of you know the Galleria in this part of the world, you'll probably find me there most times. There's a fuck all else in Hatfield. Um, oh, one thing you'll probably never have picked up from just watching my videos is that I'm a fully qualified TEFL English language teacher. That's right, I'm licensed to travel the globe and teach the Queen's English. I've not yet got a chance to use it, but who knows, maybe in 2016. And I'd like to thank you, Monaco GP Project, because that is a very interesting question and one I didn't think I'd be asked. But if you'd like to know more about my gaming history, Check out one of my earlier videos, I think it was called the Commodore Plus War Special, in which I reminisce and wax lyrical over the first games machine I ever owned, the Commodore C16 Plus 4. Thanks for your question, Monaco GP Project. And next up is SP23 Hagbard5, who asks, and he's got two questions. One, any plans about increasing the production quality, mostly audio? And I hope by that he means microphones and not my squeaky voice. Short answer, yes. Although this video is going to be very spit and sawdust, I've got no idea what the quality of this video is going to look like. I can guarantee you for my next couple of videos, you will see significant improvements. I have just bought a brand new microphone. Uh, and I also have some proper HD, um, uh, what's it called, Elgato. I've just bought myself an Elgato, so you will see some proper HD gameplay here on Consultronics in the not too distant future. And two, he asks, did you think about the fact that some viewers might not be from the same country you are and shipping costs could be quite high? I hereby exclude myself from the raffle. Um, I did think about that, but don't worry about me, I'm rolling in it. Uh, anyway, congrats on 200, nice, uh, great job mate. I just checked your page just to see if I could see where you're actually from. But, um, yeah, if you don't want to be in the raffle, I'll definitely respect your wishes. A little disappointed, though, as there's some good games to be won. Next up is Tutti UK, one of the heavyweights here on YouTube, at least from the UK gaming scene. And he says, well done on the subs. Again, I'm not... Oh, he's talking about dicks again. 
genuinely curious. Sorry, Toots, but I uh, don't swing that way. And he asks, one, a lot of people think it's very common for people on YouTube and other social media sites to not be completely honest read the price place they got the games. What are your thoughts on this? My thoughts on this? Um, I personally would take most things I hear in YouTube videos with a pinch of salt, especially regarding prices paid and such like. However, that said, I don't think that any YouTubers actually go out their way to lie about games or systems that they've picked up. Um, it's just the temptation to exaggerate is always going to be present, I suppose. Two, why did you tell Porcupine... <laughs> oh, you got me. Why did you tell Porcupine to read the price you paid for them SFC games? Keep the vids up though, mate. You're a good watch. Thank you for that, my friend. Okay, this comes down to one simple word, peer pressure. I was at work, I was talking to a friend, and he told me that he had a retro gaming page on Facebook. So I got very excited and started showing him my YouTube channel. Then I noticed your comment. Now he kind of egged me on to say to you that I found these games for free or that neighbor was just throwing them out. Now I knew no one would believe that. So I said what I said. I said, um, I think I said I paid 50, 50, 60 pounds for the lot. I didn't. You're right, it is that lot off of eBay, and I paid the full back, the full price, uh, £240. Now, I did overpay for that, I know that, but it was my birthday, so I thought, what the hell, I'll spoil myself, and Super Famicom is one of my personal favourite machines, although I know I've already said in this video that it's happening, man. Number one, the Super Famicom runs at a close second. So sorry about all that fuss regarding the Super Famicom collection video I posted, um, I'm not in the habit of actually lying about how much I paid for games myself, and to prove it, check out one of my very first pickup videos, which I did an unboxing for a Panasonic Q GameCube, where I not only showed off the price of how much I paid, but also I think I showed the, um, the eBay page as well, but I gave a shout out to the YouTuber who um, hooked me up with such a great deal. So check that one out. And we have Daniel R, my brethren. What well, go on, Daniel? Congrats, can you do a Draw My Life as a celebration? It's just a pity I didn't see your question earlier, Dan. Um, I'll tell you what I'll do, just for you. I will do a special video, a Draw My Life video, in the next coming, next, say, week or two. I haven't got time to do it here. I'm literally rushing as fast as I can. I haven't got much time left. But I will definitely do that for you, Dan. To all you prominent members of the YouTube gaming community, here's a young man just finding his feet in the game. Um, I don't think he's actually got any videos up at present, but I know he plans to do so. Um, so definitely go around and check out his channel if you get a chance, because in the very near future, I'm hoping to do some co collaborations with him. That's Money Man Dan 23 Good, good friend of mine. And we have, incredibly, we're on the last question already. And this one comes from a very cool person indeed, Matropolis86, who says... Congrats on 200 subs, my question. If you could take any retro game and make it into modern gen, what would it be, or would you? Now that is a very, very good question indeed. And as it so happens, is something I've been given a lot of thought recently, because I was actually working on a top 10 list of forgotten game franchises. So, um, the trouble with this question is, there's what I'd like to see, and there's what could actually happen. Personally, I would love to see a remake of the old computer game, Joe Blade. One of the very first games I've ever played, still holds a special place right here. Um, as for what would probably actually work in this day and age, um, I think we'd all like to see a new Street to Rage, or a good Golden Axe game. But if I had to plump for one answer, one answer only, I would probably say uh, James Pond, a new James Pond game. That game was massive across 16-bit computer and console platforms back in the early 90s, and then just suddenly disappeared. Most people don't even realise there was a third game in this series called Fish Gordon. So, incredibly, we have come to the end. I see no more questions to answer. Um, I'd like to thank everyone who took part. You're all going to a little raffle that I'm going to do in a little minute, but first I'd like to take this opportunity to say thank you. I do apologise for this video, I've got no idea how it's going to turn out uh, quality wise. I'm literally just in the door from work, not much light going on here, so I hope you can actually see me. But um, 
yeah, to everyone who subscribed, everyone who took part in these, thank you very much. And now, if I can remember what I did with them, I've got some games to give away. Let's get to it. Okay, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. I've got your names right here. Now to pick some out and do my little giveaway. Can I get a drum roll, please? So, let's see. The first game out is going to be... Infected Flinch. Congratulations, Infected Flinch. You've won a copy of Zana Vendors. Now, next one. Let's have a look in here. Oh, you can cut the tension with a knife. We have Daniel R slash Money Man Dan 23. You win a copy of 50 Cent Bulletproof on PlayStation 2. And the last game to give away is a copy of Alan Wake on the 360. So, sorry there's not many games to go around, but there wasn't many taking part. I did have a big stack um, behind me of doubles, but I think I actually got more questions asked in my 100 uh, subscriber video. Grab a piece of paper. And it is SP23 Hagsburg 5 who uh, asked not to be in it, so we'll do that one again. <laughs> so here we've got now. We have Tutti UK. So Tutti. You've just won yourself a copy of Alan Wake on the Xbox 360. Um, once this video goes live, I will send you a message and let you know. Because uh, I need your address to post it. I suppose I could deliver it. Um, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. But I'll get these into the post for you as soon as you get your address. I'll, um, I don't know if you can private message anymore. So if not, what I'll do is I'll give you my email address so you can safely send me your details. So. That is the end of my 200 subscriber special. I'm hoping it won't take 18 months, like it did the last time, to get up to 300, but you never know. So, my name is Graham. You've been watching Consultronics 200 subscriber special. I think I'm up to 206 subscribers now, so we're uh, muttering on nicely. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. This has been a lot of fun for me. I hope it's been a lot of fun for you watching it. Thanks again. I'll see you soon.